Continuing their search for quality, today Drew and Craig are travelling cross-country to Lincolnshire to visit somewhere that could be a perfect one-stop destination for Drew. Today, we're off to Hemsworth Antique Centre. And um, it apparently, right, is the largest antique centre in Europe. Oh, plenty to go at, then. Plenty to go at. You know the stock uh, I need, I'm looking for. I'm looking for some nice quality bits. I'll keep my eye open, then. Yeah. Near the market town of Gainsborough, on the site of a former RAF base, sits Hemswell Antique Centre. Set over four buildings, it's the largest of its type in Europe. 375 dealers share 65,000 square feet here, showcasing fine antiques, furniture, lighting, art and much more besides. Hemswell's owner is Robert Miller. You've got a huge range of stock here at Hemsworth. We have hundreds of thousands of items, anything ranging from a pound up to 10,000 pounds. There'll be plenty of items for Drew to find here today. That's magic. I know, it's fabulous, isn't it? Hello there. Morning, gentlemen. Hi, Drew. How you doing? Welcome to Hemswell. Hi, Greg. Hi, Marvellous. Well, we've never been here before. You've got a real surprise awaiting you today. There's lots to see here. We've got four buildings full of antiques. It's going to be busy today, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's interesting, isn't it? Lovely, isn't it? What a strange thing. It's just come in, that has. It's an acquired taste, this stuff, but... It's still very, very interesting because they're sort of added to and messed about with. But this face is great. So what your hair was like when you had it? Yeah. <laughs> it does look a little bit like that. Yeah. Yeah. I can't I remember the having hair. the same. Brilliant. You're not coming again. My first trip to Hemswell Antique Centre, and I think you have to really come here to acknowledge just and understand just how big this place is. And this isn't just big, it's a whopper. My opinion, as you know, on, on antique centres is, is they're just the best thing for a dealer. You know, it's like a one-stop supermarket for me. I'm able to come here, hopefully, buy multiple items. Yeah, what about this little hippo here? Buy loads of these. We walked around the corner and there was a little leather, what everybody calls a little Liberty hippo, because they were retailed through Liberty. And this is quite a good one, actually. It's in nice condition. Tails on there, remnants of the ears. Still has its tusks. So, um, not bad at all. <laughs> This leather hippo is in the style of an Immersa, the Essex upholsterer who began handcrafting animals from leather offcuts in 1927. Hippos were a 1970s bestseller at Liberty of London and American stockist Abercrombie and Fitch. In good condition, this copy could be worth around 250 pounds. No price. Um, I think it was 135. I can do it for uh, 100 pounds, straight 100 pounds on that one. It's nice, that. 100 pounds, yeah? Yeah, can do that. Brilliant. Makes lovely Thank job. You. It was a good price. We'll give it a good clean and a polish, put it in the shop. We'll make 50, 60 pounds on that one. It's a, it's a good mix, isn't it? Yeah, massive mix. Uh, there's a tea storage jar there. And look about that. God, yeah, look at that one. There, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you know, there was a shop in Flan Roost when I was a kid, yeah? And in, when you go out of school, and you went into the sweet shop, yeah, and he had the whole wall full, the whole lot, floor to ceiling in these. Fantastic. That's a rare little beast, that, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, that is. Proper yeah. one. That came in yesterday, that did. Oh, what? When tea was such a commodity, it's a huge, expensive commodity. There's um, this very large tea caddy. Now, it's not your normal tea caddy you'd have in the kitchen. This is one that would be in a retailer's shop. I'm not completely convinced the top is absolutely original, but that doesn't matter because it looks right and the age and material used are right. It's got this first paint to the tin. It's in pretty good condition, um, but it's a good size. It's a good size and people use them for all sorts. Three, two, five. What, do you think? what can I do on it? Um, what about 275? Salvage hunter Drew Pritchard is in Lincolnshire at Europe's largest antique centre. 
Well, I've never been here before. You've got a real surprise awaiting you today. Where he's hoping to buy a giant tea caddy. Three, two, five. What can I do on it? Um, what about 275? What about 250? I'll meet you in the middle, 265. Yeah. Brilliant, thank you. Yeah, we'll have that. I don't see many of them around. Paid 265 for the tea caddy, I think I can get 350 out of it, so we'll make £85, hopefully. Fingers crossed. But there is no work to do on that one. Maybe tighten up a little hinge, a bit of a wipe, could be about that, really. Ooh, that lovely. Bit of cold painted bronze. I do really love that stuff. Cockatoo. So can I, 165. What would you be able to do on I would, I would have to give him a call because he's quite strict on his price. Is he? Guy, okay. Yeah. There's one chap who's got this case and it's just really interesting stuff. But amongst them, he has a Austrian cold painted bronze cockatoo. And they're really, really nice quality, these things. And I seem to be able to buy and sell them almost the same day. They will come in and, and shoot out the door, literally fly out. <laughs> this turn of the 20th century bronze cockatoo is stamped Franz Bergmann, which was one of the best known manufacturers of individually cast cold painted Vienna bronzes around that time. In aged original condition, this high-end collectible could be worth around £350. OK, gents, I've just spoken to uh, the dealer over this, and uh, he will do 10% on this one, so the best would be 148 Yeah, I'll have it. Yeah, I'll have it. Yeah, I love, I love that. I just love... I'm, I think we can make 50 quid on it. 148 we end up paying for it. That's great. I will get just over £200 for it, so, again, it's a small turn, but there's no work to do. The prices I'm getting things for, great. Really good. You know, it's leaving me margins in them. When, when, when we're looking at things and there's not the margin in it, no matter, you know, I've got to walk away from it. But with the things I've found so far and bought, the margin is there. With time ticking on, Drew heads upstairs. God, it just goes on, doesn't it? Loads. I have to say, it, it, it is extremely well put together. That's nice. Having to wander around upstairs, and there's this lantern. Instantly, I'm in love with this thing. It's got it all. The form is just right. It hasn't been over-polished too much at all. It hasn't been polished in a long time, which is great. They've got it, as far as I'm concerned, incorrectly marked as French 1940s. Not in my book. That's English 1850s, 1860s, that thing. And of real quality. It's a good thing, that one. This cast brass hall lantern on fixed supports boasts original wheel cut beveled glass. Its simple lines and patinated brass frame suggest it is of classic mid 19th century English country house design, making it worth an illuminating £1,200. What can that be? I can do um, 285 on that. Sold. Lovely, I'm having that. Thank you. Thank you. Best buy of the day. Yeah. That is a little belter. We get it for just under 300 quid. Happy days. What a thing. I would travel far and wide to go and get that. Very nice. Got it all. Form, originality, style, it's chic. It's, it's unrestored original. It's great. With so many items on offer and the day drawing to a close, Drew finally moves on to Hemswell's second of four buildings. What was this building before? Uh, these were dormitory buildings for the RAF. Ah, so, uh, what the whole site yeah. was that sort of... It's where the Lancaster bombers flew from in the Second World War. Really? Yeah. Oh, hello. Three, seven, five. Scottish by looks of it. Go into one of the larger rooms downstairs, which used to be, I think, the barracks. Have a wander around in there, and then as I turn around to leave, on the right there was a pitch pine chest of drawers. It's particularly well made for a piece of pine furniture. Usually they would reserve that sort of quality for oak or mahogany. 
This 1880s five drawer chest, probably made in Scotland, is constructed from sturdy but richly coloured pitch pine. In the manner of the aesthetic movement, its painted line decoration and original brass pulls mean it could be worth around £700. So how much is it? It's 375. Can we do three? 340. That's the best I can do on it, really. Yeah, we'll have that. Okay, you. lovely. Thanks lovely. very much. Yeah, happy with that. Fab, at £340, that will more than double its money. Highly unusual and extremely original. Very nice thing. Again, classic country house furniture, that. My first visit to Helmswell. Cannot believe in the three decades I've been involved in the antiques industry, I've not been here. What a great place. I've bought so well. The overriding thing today is quality and unrestored original. That's what I like. That's my thing. And I was able to achieve that here today. Well, there you go. That wasn't bad. No, it was a good day, that. We did well. Yeah. I mean, we got some properly good things there. That lamp was stunning, though. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. That's a £1,200 lamp. Yeah. That's an absolute gem. We did well. Yeah. We tied that stuff in properly in the back. Uh, oh, I haven't even tied it in. I've just thrown it in. Is that, <laughs> is that not the right thing to do?
It's a good mix, isn't it? Yeah, massive mix. Uh, there's a tea storage jar there. And look at that. God, yeah, look at that one. There, isn't it? Yeah. You know? you know, there was a shop in Flanroost when I was a kid, yeah? And in, when you go out of school, and you went into the sweet shop, yeah? And he had the whole wall full. The whole lot, floor to ceiling in these. Fantastic. That's a rare little beast, that, yeah, isn't it? that is. Proper yeah. one. That came in yesterday, that did. Draw. What? When tea was such a commodity. It's a huge, expensive commodity. There's um, this very large tea caddy. Now, it's not your normal tea caddy you'd have in the kitchen. This is one that would be in a retailer's shop. I'm not completely convinced the top is absolutely original, but that doesn't matter because it looks right and the age and material used are right. It's got this first paint to the tin. It's in pretty good condition, um, but it's a good size. It's a good size and people use them for all sorts. Three, two, five. What do you think? What can I do on it? Um, what about 275? Salvage hunter Drew Pritchard is in Lincolnshire at Europe's largest antique centre. Well, I've never been here before. You've got a real surprise awaiting you today. Where he's hoping to buy a giant tea caddy. 325. What, what can I do on it? Um, what about 275? What about 250? 